Well, I, I believe that that would be the hope of everyone in, in the sense that, you know, this year is a, has been a difficult year. The states have had to be bailed out uh, a couple of times. I think it's the second lifeline that the federal government is handing down to them. And so this year it would seem that people will be expecting or well, not seeing a lot of projects in their constituencies. But I want to move away from that question. You are the Minister for Power, Works and Housing. And for a lot of people, their concern is about electricity. And, you know, the fact that it would seem that it's, it's dropped drastically in a lot of homes. What's been the reason for that? Well, um, let me, perhaps before I answer, set the context and the factual realities that we deal with. Uh, I was at a town hall meeting yesterday and I was saying, and I reiterate that, the first problem is that there is not enough power. And now... Why isn't there enough power? What do we have as a nation? Today we have 25 power plants. Three are hydro plants, Shiroro, Jeba, and Kainji. The rest are gas-fired plants. Now, we have an installed capacity, installed capacity of 12,000 megawatt. Now, we have about 140 turbines installed. Now, but the available capacity today is about 8,000. And installed and available simply means that some turbines are down, some projects haven't been fully completed, and so on and so forth. Now, the power being generated comes from only about 78 turbines out of 140. And they are largely fired by gas. Now, that power has gone down because we have a gas outage, one of the gas pipelines. And very quickly, let me make this point. You will hear technical terms like associated gas and non-associated gas. It just means associated gas is gas produced as a result and consequence of producing crude oil. Non-associated gas are largely non-crude oil gas fields, which we have, but we haven't exploited that. So most of our, our gas comes from the drilling of oil. Now, when that pipeline failed in, I think, February or March, we had to get through the Ministry of Petroleum to shell the operator of the, of the, of the oil, oil field to quickly start a procurement process. So as a result of that, uh, 78 uh, turbines dropped to about 50 because there was no gas. That's the reality. As at yesterday's energy report that I got, we were producing only 3,900. 3,393 megawatts. I will get today's report. Now, again, and, and I, I understand this because I was in Lagos over the weekend. It's a very hot season of the year. Um, and I see my children too, sweating, heat rash, and looking at me. It's like, look, what are you doing about this thing? But let me be very clear. This problem can be solved. But it just needs some more detailed and methodical approach. Now, first work to do is supply more gas. So without gas, I'm like a generator owner who can get fuel, so I can't power my plants. And I know that the Ministry of, power, Ministry of N, uh, uh, Petroleum Resources is working hard, first to overcome that problem. We had plans that we had agreed on to provide more gas to all of those uh, uh, struggling uh, power plants which didn't have gas. So there were errors of planning of yesterday. But there are errors that can be corrected. There are omissions of yesterday. Proper planning to build a power plant and arrange that simultaneously when the power plant is completed, the gas input is also completed. We'll, we'll, we'll compound with the button. But we'll come to all of those in terms of the estimation. But in terms of what we have, uh, have we dealt with the question of appropriate pricing for gas? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Now, the, the price for gas used to be one dollar thirty cents for local consumption gas exported out of nigeria for sale used to sell at four dollars so there was no incentive for people to produce gas for local consumption if you were a businessman producing gas and you had a market of four dollars and a market of one dollar thirty where certainly the logical thing to expect, I assume, is that you'll be looking to do business in the $4 market. That gap has been breached now by an additional $2. To bring it closer, it's now 330 
as a result of that that has been inputted down the pricing mechanism and that's why you were, one of the reasons why we had the new tariff order mm -hmm. because you couldn't have that differential in the major raw material and not have a corresponding uh, uh, um, adjustment in, in the cost of the final product. You know so what a lot of people sorry. But I just need to make this point and if I may about because I've spoken about incremental power. Incremental power will come from that plan to get more gas. Incremental power will come from completing more power projects. So Azura has started in Benin. Zungeru where there was a court dispute that set the project back by about three to four years has been resolved. Construction work is going on now in Zungeru. Um, uh, Aba Enugu Disco had uh, a standoff. They were in court for about two, three years. Money was being lost. We've resolved that now. It's just to tidy the paperwork now that issues new licenses and breaks up the distribution into two. And hopefully by the end of this year, because the project was reported to be very, very far gone, hopefully before the end of this year, that can be resolved. Now, as we do that, many people will get connected. Now, the point you are making about power outage, let me also make this point. In the last one year, there were parts of the country. Unfortunately, they probably don't have the media presence. They didn't have energy at all because they were not connected. Some of the parts of the Northeast that had their transmission lines damaged have been restored. We've completed transmission projects in places like Okada, in places like Makodi. And so that 5,000 that went to 3,000, those people who didn't partake at all are now getting some energy. Don't tell so us it, that you're about to complain about Lagos media. No, no, well. no, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> complaining about Lagos media. I'm just saying, I'm just... These are some of the areas that yes. are getting electricity. So they're getting now. electricity for them. It's also, it's so the story is a mixed blessing, mixed story. What we get, oh, after eight months, after six months, oh, we now have power. I know that in the next few weeks to months, the next question is, oh, our power has gone out after because it's not sustained, because it's still not enough. So what was enough? What wasn't enough? We still have to share, and more people get hooked up. But there's a plan to complete 47 transmission projects in this year's budget. And I believe that we can do it, even if the budget is passed today. And you are going to ask the question about timing of the budget. The interesting thing is that our focus, and this is what has changed, our focus was as much as possible, no new projects. There's so many projects awarded that are not being funded. And therefore, if we put money to those projects, we can gain a lot of time. Barring some of the delays and inefficiencies that we will see during the rainy season where sometimes you can't asphalt because there is, no, there is no dry weather, but we can gain a lot of traction. And what will be important in this year's budget is that it's, it puts more money into the public space. And I'm, I must reinforce this point. A budget where you have 85%, almost 90% recurrent expenditure really is a budget that excludes the larger majority of society because it just goes, goes to government spending. Now, government officials are important. Public servants are important for driving the process. But those who formulate budget policies must be careful not to overspend on the less than 1% who drive budget. So the 30% uh, capital spend, which was the plan in this year's budget, is a significant departure from the past, and it helps us to redistribute wealth in the society when fully implemented, because it goes to construction. Construction workers are not, therefore, necessarily government workers. They can go back to site, earn their daily income, procurement goes on, they sell granite, they sell laterite, they sell iron rod, they move cement around, transportation is involved, Water tankers get back to supplying water to construction sites. Vendors go. Th and that's the way for me to really reflate the economy, which is the, the thrust of the, of the budget.